All right, so they're uh, part of the reasoning behind the resignation of the three IEBC uh, commissioners. And joining me in studio now to really discuss what this means is Okwe Achiando. He is an advocate of the High Court. Thanks very much for being with us on uh, NTV th today. Thank you, thank you. Much appreciated. Uh, your reaction, first of all, to the news of uh, the resignation of the vice chair and two commissioners of the IEBC? Well, it is by surprise, but it was also, uh, it is the timing, but it was forthcoming. Uh, it is only that they have done it too late. They ought to have done it much earlier. If you give, if you understand the reasons we are now giving, mm. my position would be, I don't know whether those reasons are justified because they could have asked the chairman to step aside, that is to ask him to resign. Passed a vote of no confidence in him. Mm -hmm. That could have been an easier way out, but now that they have decided, the three of them, to go, and we have known what has been happening in the boardroom of IABC, yeah. then it was n it's not so much surprising, but the timing. By yesterday, I think political pundits who have argued on this have said that some of them most likely were going to be kicked out by parliament. A petition could have been made to parliament because it's no longer serving the interest of Kenyans. Uh, if you look at the IBC since the uh, Mr. Wafola Chibukati came in, up to now it has not been stable at all. And this one now vindicates those people who are saying that there is a problem within IBC. I've also had another reason which they have given that uh, the secretary of the IBC has been uh, removed. He has not been removed in legal parlance. My understanding is there is a letter which was written to him by the chairman uh, sending him home. That is uh, compulsory relief. Compulsory relief does not interfere with the terms and conditions of one's employment. It only removes you from your position of employment, though I don't want to discuss much mm -hmm. uh, because it's a matter which is before the court. But there is no removal as far as I'm concerned because he's still earning his salary, the terms are still intact until the investigation is put before the board and the board now says we are suspending you, you can now go home or a show cause letter is written that can you give us the reasons as to why the audit queries which have been raised were not addressed in a proper manner or if the investigation puts his office uh, squarely that you are involved. Mm -hmm then that is the point that the disciplinary action will start. So that reasoning, again, to me, does not hold. They have said they have feeble, you know, the feeble, uh, uh, the feeble standard they had has now been eroded by the board meeting which they had. Right. I think uh, we do not know how feeble it was, but again, my understanding would be there is a manner in which things are supposed to be done. Because as we shall be discussing this, we will see when there is a vacancy that arises in the position of the chairman, the vice chairman, or a member of the commission, what really is supposed to be done in terms of the constitution and the IBC Act. Right. Yes. And we'll come to that in just a moment. But uh, do you therefore think that this resignation is um, tactful and strategic? Because you mentioned that it should have happened um, much sooner. It could have been in two ways. One, there could have been fear. You see, people want to protect their integrity. Mm -hmm. There could have been fear that a Kenyan has a right in terms of the Constitution to petition Parliament, spelling out the grounds upon which a commissioner is supposed to be removed from their office. And I believe now that they have, they, they, they have lived beyond their usefulness. Yeah. Uh, they have already played in the hands of the powers to be uh, they are very ready to receive the petition and most of them are going to be removed. I wouldn't be surprised that a petition also made against uh, reusing the same reasons for Chibukati also to vacate the office. And therefore, we may end up not having the commissioners. The commission might be reconstituted. The fear is, yes, uh, people, I've heard people say that it might take long. It doesn't take long to recruit the commissioners because the commissioners were in their, if my memory serves me right, and what the Constitution says, they're supposed to serve for six months. Mm -hmm. uh, no, six years. So we, and we, six months before the date when they were appointed, there should be a process 
that is put in place in terms of Schedule 1 to start bringing in the new commissioners yeah. before their term ends. That is, the, I mean, before their terms end. So that is, if you look at that critically, it could have been tactical that why don't we go? Maybe there is a tsunami that is coming. We need to run away from this tsunami and we tend our resignation. Because if you look at them, the two have always been together. That is the vice chairman and Mr. Krugat. I'm only surprised that Margaret also joined in this time. But if you look at their politics, which we all know, and they also know, that we know, yes. is that two people have always been, or three. And that does not mean, again, the commission cannot transact business. Kenyans need to understand that. That notwithstanding the provision, mm -hmm. Uh, no, notwithstanding a vacancy in the membership of the commission, it does not mean they cannot call for a, me for a meeting. Okay. The four of them, I believe three have gone. Four are there, the chairman and, uh, you see, the chairman and three others right. are still there. So there are four of them. Okay, and we'll come back to really what yeah. this means. But uh, just about the fact that they've resigned, uh, do you think it has much to do with uh, Ezra Chiloba, the CEO, being uh, sent on leave? That's a subterfuge. I don't think so. There are weighty issues within the commission, and the opposition used to talk about all this. If there are tenders, and I mean, if the CEO has done something wrong, we do not know if he has done something wrong. At this stage, nobody can victimize the secretary. We do not know what has happened. We only know that there is an audit report that is there. And this audit report, there is an audit query, which was done by the Auditor General. And there is also another audit report, which the chairman, uh, I believe, must have uh, uh, asked to be done. But we don't know what these reports are. They, they have to be interrogated. And that is when we'll be in a position to say, because we don't want to go by rumors. We don't want to go by politics around there when it comes to the integrity of an officer of the commission. Those reports, once Kenyans come to know what they contain, and the board, that is the IBC, will meet the commissioners themselves, interrogate and say the charges can you show cause why the following happened that is the due process we and we must follow the due process so i would be very much reluctant to say that esa chiloba at this moment or at this point in time is having any reason for their uh, resignation for, yes exactly well, one, I, I of the, so. one of the issues that these commissioners raise in a statement uh, released to newsrooms is that they have very little faith in the chairperson, Wafula Chebukati. Yeah. What do you make of that? If they had that little faith in Wafula Chebukati, they should have asked him to resign first. Before resigning. Before themselves, themselves resigning. Right. They should have asked him, There's, we have sufficient grounds to make us believe that it is untenable for you to continue to discharge your duties under the present circumstances of the commission. If he had refused putting to him the reasons, mm -hmm. then in that case, if they resign, they would say, he has made life very difficult for the commissioners to discharge their duties. We have not seen such a thing. What we have seen is always the division of the commissioners yeah. until this time that they have now resigned. Whether this is a consequence of Chibukati's uh, uh, conduct, we still don't know. But Looking at even what happened, you remember the other time Chib uh, Chibukati also uh, relieved uh, Mr. Chiloba. I think it was during the general elections yes. uh, that the deputy took over and he was not going to be involved in the preparation of the, it was the sec it, uh, after the court mm -hmm. had nullified the, 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 the petition. So if you look at that, 
It is something that started far much back and has now culminated in the resignation of the commissioners. That resignation, we can only make political projections that what is it that could have happened? You remember during the time we were told that during the board meeting, the chair and Dr. Kurgat, the vice chair and Dr. Kurgat were not a party to that decision, that they were ambushed. If, it is, if indeed it is true, then the chairman, I think, uh, of, uh, he overshot right. okay, himself because the agenda once prepared. If it was a special board me uh, commission meeting, then you cannot amend the, the agenda. If it was a special meeting which was called to discuss a particular issue. In that case, that is the reason that has been given. Though I don't want to go into details mm. because those are the reasons which will be given uh, in court and, uh, and discussed. So, I, if it was that they knew and it was part of the agenda and the chairman already briefed them, then I don't think there is any reason for them to have tendered their resignation. But this division has always been there. We know about it. Yeah. Yeah, we know about the division. It has yeah. been deep. It but you indeed. don't rule out the political uh, factors, some players outside the commission. Because in the statement, uh, the commissioners did say that the IBC should work as a single unit, never, uh, quote, us versus them, or commissioners versus secretariat, or chair versus CEO. So they have alluded to the fact that, you know, um, the IBC should work as a single unit. But uh, based on, you know, what we've been seeing, um, it seems as if they never really have worked as a single unit. Yeah, because they were, when they were appointed, maybe they were given briefs of what they were to undertake. And now that the brief is no longer there, even during that time, we could see the commissioners were sharply divided on every single issue. They had never, unlike um, Isa Kassan's commission, though they had also their own difficulties, but we would not see what we are now seeing in the Chipukati-led commission. Yeah. This one, from the word go, they have been divided. Because when uh, Hassan was removed and uh, Chibukati came in, you remember there were a lot of political factors which were considered. Mm. And the, the, the opposition, the ruling party, there was hustling forth and back and forth. And when, instead of settling at that point, knowing the agenda, what they were supposed to do in terms of the act, in terms of the constitution, then they continue to be divided. It is not a division which started yesterday. <laughs> it's a division which started from the time, even before the elections were called, they had been divided. Right. Yes. Okay. Well, with me in studio is still Mr. Okwe uh, Achiando. He is an advocate of the High Court. I'll uh, continue my discussion with him in just a moment, but still on the same topic of the resignation of uh, the commissioners. I'm now joined live on phone with a former commissioner, and that is Thomas uh, Letangula. Thanks very much for uh, contributing to NTV today. Uh, what is your reaction to to the resignation of the vice chair and the two commissioners. Okay. Uh, hi, Thomas. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. All right, thanks very much for joining us. I'm just asking what your uh, initial reaction is to the resignation of the commissioners of the IEBC. Yes, actually. Uh, we didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming myself. But uh, I, I think uh, it, it all boiled down to what has been happening in the last few days, uh, the cracking of the, no, with the suspension of the CEO, uh, and then now the calling of the meeting today, and finally uh, the resignation of three commissioners. Uh, and this really has, has brought all operations of the commission to unhealth. I, I think it will have a major in, impact on the operations of the Commission uh, and, and on the way forward on how to manage this uh, Commission. 
All right, uh, Thomas, I'm afraid the line isn't very clear. So in studio here, uh, we are struggling to hear you. But if I understand, you have said that this will have an impact on the commission. What sort of an impact, in your opinion? Yes, uh, true, Smith, is that the thing is, the IBC asks that uh, for the commission to make uh, decisions, uh, there must be a quorum of five commissioners. As it is, three of them have resigned, leaving three, and therefore the remaining three cannot conduct any substantive business because they have quorum. And this has effectively uh, paralyzed the operations of the commission as far as guidance by the commissioners is concerned. So the business of the commission is really put to a stop. Okay, and uh, with me in studio, I have uh, Okwe Achiando. Uh, Achiando. He is an advocate of the High Court. Uh, earlier in our conversation, he said that this resignation probably should have come uh, sooner rather than later. Do you agree with that? Uh, my question initially was that some issues. Then we expect the chairman to leadership to call commissioners to put the house order. Because as you have it's a very important commission. It's All right, not Thomas. I'm, I'm afraid we're, we're struggling to hear, to hear you. Um, let's just try that again. If you could just repeat uh, your response, whether or not you agree with Okwe Achando about how soon this resignation should have happened. Well, Smith, my, my take has been that uh, I thought the chairman would try to bring consensus among commissioners uh, and provide leadership uh, and uh, therefore put the house in order to combat uh, this kind of crisis. So uh, I didn't see it coming, really. I thought the commissioners, they have a responsibility to the country uh, because this is a very important issue which cannot afford to stay without the commissioners. All right, Thomas, uh, thanks uh, very much for your contribution. Um, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to take this conversation further because we really are struggling uh, to hear you clearly in studio. So it makes it difficult for me uh, to ask you uh, some of the relevant questions. But uh, thank you either way for contributing on NTV today. Uh, that's uh, Thomas Letangula, the, uh, a former commissioner at the IEBC, speaking to us about uh, that resignation. All right, and apologies uh, for the quality of that audio. All right, my conversation now can continue yes. clearly here with uh, Okwe Achando. Uh, as I said, it was a little bit difficult to hear what uh, you, Thomas had to say. Yes, I was struggling. Yes, yes, I, I do realize that. So let's pick up with um, the impact that this resignation is going to have on the commission. Uh, just a correction there that there are now just three commissioners left. Um, but in your view, well, what impact is this going to have? Uh, my reading of uh, the Constitution and the IBC Act provides that notwithstanding the vacancy, there is such a provision that even if there is a vacancy, I think the makers of the Constitution and the framers of the statute, that is the IBC statute, envisage a situation where there may be resignation and uh, therefore the quorum, because the quorum should be five, if my memory serves me right, might not be achieved. So there is a provision which says that notwithstanding any vacancy, the discharge of the commission, the functions of the commission, will continue. But it cannot continue endlessly. It might only be temporarily. And that is why that goes to the question which is also in the Act. That is why the composition of the commission was given such that it is for a, it is five, six and six years. Six months there should be a process put in place in terms of Schedule 1 to bring other commissioners because their terms are not renewable. And it also goes to <coughs> say, in terms of the Act, the President 
because the resignation of the commissioners, the letter is supposed to be given to the president. Mm -hmm. Once the president receives that letter, the president has seven days within which to put in a process to replace the commissioners who have resigned, who have died, or where the petition has been made and they've been removed from, from office. So the president has now, the whole thing, the key person here is the president. That is what the act provides in terms of Schedule 1. And that Schedule 1 will be used in a modified manner because at first it was envisaged that if a commissioner dies, what happens? That Schedule 1 actually talks about the setting up of a committee uh, within six months to start the process of replacing the, the commissioners whose terms are coming to an end. Yeah. Now, when a resignation, death and removal, at the Schedule 1 should be used in a modified manner so that the president now, within seven days, will have to act and gazette the vacancies. I see. So the crisis is only temporary. Right. And in terms of the law. Okay. Yes. Does uh, what's happening really make you question uh, the integrity of the election? Because, as we said earlier, uh, I know it is looking back, but yes. it is an important point. As we said earlier, there needed to be unity in the uh, IEBC, and there wasn't from the get-go. What impact would this have had, really, on the outcome of the election? In fact, my reaction would be the opposition must be celebrating. Really? They must be saying our position has been vindicated. This is what we have been saying along, mm. that the commission is not talking uh, in, in a uniform manner. They are not tackling issues in a uniform manner. They have always had their own views other than what they are supposed to do. Right. So which means the opposition will be saying, we told you. You remember some of the things which were, quest uh, which were questioned by the opposition, the tenders, mofos, if I can remember. Yes. How did they do the tender? It is one of the issues the chairman has now raised. And several other issues of the tenders. With the opposition, they were talking about that, look, this is not a commission that is capable of overseeing the elections. So their position, as far as I'm concerned, is vindicated. Because if you look at the reasons which they have given, they are as feeble as the reasons where they were saying their feeble faith mm -hmm. has now dissipated. So Kenyans lost faith. There is a section of Kenyans, not every Kenyan, that they lost faith long time in this commission. And that is why I was saying that this commission ought to have resigned much earlier. Because even they, they are tainted. Their integrity, they should have salvaged that integrity mm -hmm. which they had. But right now they are saying, you see, we have to go out. When the opposition they were saying, please get out, get fresh blood to do it. The only problem I have again is, we don't have a national ethos. Mm -hmm. We have a very good constitution and particularly the provisions of Article 10. And the commission is supposed to observe Article 10. They are supposed to observe chapter 6 of the constitution because those are the chapters when they are being appointed, they are spelled out that for a commissioner to be appointed, there are qualifications and some of them are constitutional qualifications. One, do you, are you going to abide by the provisions of Article 10? Right. Have you complied with the provisions of chapter 6 of the constitution? Leave alone the academic qualifications, you must not be solvent, uh, person of sound mind, those ones we knew. But now, <clears throat> if they appoint in their appointments and the discharge of duties, they never conformed with the provisions of Article 10 and the Chapter 6 of the Constitution, then they had no business being there. And this is what Kenyans have been saying, that we need men and women who can discharge their functions or their duties without 
any political influence, right. any economic influence. Uh, the uh, commissioners say they have no faith in Chebukati, and as you said earlier, uh, they should have asked him to resign. Yeah. Do you think as long as he's perhaps at the helm, uh, there will be challenges at the IEBC? No, my prediction or my, uh, my thesis on that is even Chipukati himself is not safe. Mm. This is what I'm saying here today. Even himself is going. Why do you say that? I'm saying that because once your commissioners have passed a vote of no confidence and resigned, mm. there are certain weighty issues that we may not know at this juncture. And once they come to the surface, and most of the audit report, we'll also see the functions of the chairman, the functions of the secretary, and where they mix, and which function falls squarely within the chairman, and whether the chairman is culpable or not culpable. And you won't be surprised, as I've already said, that uh, uh, um, what we call the public interest litigation, a Kenyan who wants to protect the Constitution and the electoral justice will move to court and petition Parliament for the removal of the chairman and the other remaining commissioners. The only danger we have if that happens, I'm not worried so much with the resignation of the three commissioners because, mm -hmm. as I've said, the president will have the leeway to have them replaced in terms of the act. Yeah. But the problem again is, they come in, Chibukati and the others, there is a vote of no confidence, or the petition for their removal is there, it succeeds, and it goes home. You know, we are supposed to be going for the boundaries review, mm -hmm. which must be done bef uh, one, 12 months before yeah. the general elections. How will they acclimatize themselves, the functions and of the commission become people to be inducted the period of induction they understand the operations and there is no chairman or there is a new chairman this is the problem that we have we have rocked the boat we must live with it and as we live with this boat action must be taken immediately and the president must act immediately. But even if, if the president does replace them, how confident really can Kenyans be that uh, the replacement commissioners are going to carry out a good job? Because if we look at uh, the history of the IEBC, it does look rather toothless. Well, the IEBC, as you know, sometimes you may be propelled into power by, by politics. Politicians may place you in a position that they want also to use you. You as a Kenyan using chapter 6 of the Constitution and Article 10, you need to stick to your lane. Mm -hmm. And if it, you find it is impossible, you give way to those who can perform the functions. And as long as the politicians will continue to interfere in the functions of the IBC, we will not get an angel because the people who are there are from amongst ourselves. We are not getting foreigners to come and become IBC. We know what we want, but we don't want to achieve what we want because we have to use shortcuts. This is the problem, the politics of IBC. Once we keep off politics out of IBC and they are let to do their job, I believe they can carry out their but functions. But is that ever, is that but likely? But it is not, that is what I'm saying. We don't have the national ethos yes. from the political players. They are preaching water and drinking wine to Kenyans. Right. This is the problem that we have. Because if today you put me there, I believe within one year I shall have either achieved my function, uh, my achieved what my, the, the key performance indicators. Mm -hmm. Within one year, I shall have achieved. And I'll make sure that politics is out of the commission. The moment it comes, I need to come out and tell Kenyans how difficult it is to work. And then I call it quits. But that is also surrender. Sometimes you won't be patriotic and serve your country with enthusiasm and gusto. But there are political players who would also like 
short-term interest we achieve. So if you have, like for example, I want to give an example. There is this chairman, the, f the, 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 the former chairman of the uh, Independent Electoral Commission of India, mm -hmm. Mr. Sheshan. So I think the composition of the commission, there were only two. And in one of the largest democracies in the whole world, what did he do? Any politician who had the name Sheshan, including the prime minister, mm -hmm. they were shaken. He stood his ground and he achieved and he changed the electoral malpractice in India. Up to today, he is being credited. Why can't we have another Sheshan here? There are people who can do it. Any time, any political, maybe BJP, the Congress, and these other parties, they heard about him, mm -hmm. they would be shaking in their trousers. <laughs> because they know what it means. You are disqualified. Yeah. And he will call you. So that is why even uh, vote capturing, ballot capturing, people fighting within... It is a thing of the past because there was only one man out of one plus billion of Indians who took up the mantle and decided to work. And they worked. And so that is what I'm saying. Kenyans, we need to be patriotic because even if you change the Electoral Commission, I agree with you, even if you change the Electoral Commission but the political situation still exists in the manner in which it does, then I don't see much progress of the commission as we are going to bring uh, to discharge their functions. Because at least you saw the Isa Kassan led commission was homogeneous. Yeah. They didn't have all this that we hear about as the uh, Wabukatis, Wafula Chebukatis yeah. commission. But they were also removed from the office. And as we, as we bring this conversation to a close, how much of a challenge uh, is it going to be uh, for the IEBC to succeed, in your opinion? Yes, it is, going to, it is going to be a challenge. Because remember, the history of IEBC started with the supervisor of elections. There was a man, once upon a time a man called Nyarangi, who was in the office of the president, and he was supervising the elections and a civil servant. From there, we had the Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission, and uh, that is uh, the late Kivuitu. We had Chesoni, Kivuitu, and uh, we have Isa Kassan. We saw what happened to the Kivuitu's commission. We saw what happened to the uh, Isa Kassan led commission. Mm -hmm. Now, again, Chibula, uh, I mean, Wafula, Wafula Chebukati's yeah. commission. It means we must now get a man or a woman who is ready to sacrifice his life to make sure that his life or her life to make sure that the IEBC succeeds mm -hmm. without any political or economic influence, without looking beyond your shoulders that who is hearing and who is listening. And what will I do? If I did this one, you take instructions from some other quarters, not from the commission. Then I'm assuring you, if we continue in this manner, the country is not going to be stable. Because the impact of what's happening here has a direct impact on 2022. Because people have started talking about 2022. Mm -hmm. And who is going to be the president in 2022? We can see realignments. So it is not just an isolated matter. Because the person who will now declare that you are the president of the Republic of Kenya is the chairman of the... IBC. Yeah. So whatever happens there has a lot of political ramifications in the political field. And that is why politicians are watching. Maybe I'm also watching. You never know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you never know. Right. Yeah. And so in terms of the way forward uh, immediately, uh, the work is in the hands of the president, as it, you say, once yes. he is served with the formal uh, resignation. Yes, once he accepts that the person who the act, the now the custodian is the president of the Republic of Kenya. And he is given seven days. There was that agency. Mm -hmm. Because if the vacancy also continues, the discharge of the functions of the commission might also be very difficult. Of course. Because there, there is a section of the commissioners who have expressed lack of confidence 
in those who are remaining. They are questioning, why are you remaining there when the house is burning? Right. There must be good reasons. And also, there is, a, uh, there, there, there is also a section of Kenyans who they are asking themselves, why did this guy go out? There is something with the tenders that they know. Mm. So these are the things which, the factors which are uh, at play. And we need now to have a stable. And I'm appealing to the politicians. We need a stable IBC to stabilize the country called Kenya, a country we love so much and dearly. And also to give Kenyans uh, confidence yes. in the commission and also in the yeah. electoral process. In whatever duty that they perform, Kenyans should have the confidence. Because lack of confidence means what? Suspicion. And when you have suspicion, that is when the country goes uh, haywire. And we don't want our country to be unstable. We want a country that 50 years, I remember yesterday I was watching the president of Ghana addressing a meeting with the, with the French president. Mm -hmm. And uh, what he spoke about, anybody who listened to that speech, he was a pan-Africanist. Mm -hmm. I, I saw Nkrumah, a new Nkrumah had emerged. And that is how Africans are supposed to be. Why can't we stable our own institution here? Have faith, have confidence in it, and the men and women who have been given the duty or the duties to discharge in an atmosphere where there is no friction. If there is, we know what to do. If there is a commissioner who is supposed to be removed, we, use, uh, we follow the new process. We cannot just wake up and say, you... Today you are going, like today we woke up and we found the commissioners <laughs> are going, they have already resigned. Right. But before I, maybe before I, uh, close, I yeah. end, yes. uh, we started, but I should have started with this. Mm -hmm. I send my sincere condolences to the family and relatives and the people who struggled together with him, the late uh, Stanley Jindo Matiba uh, is an icon. He is a man we will remember. We would not be even sitting here talking. I would have not even come to your studio to give this, uh, the sentiments which I've just given, but were it not for Matiba's struggle. And when he started that thing, he, it cost him his life. I agree with Paul Muite when he said yesterday that Matiba has not died uh, a natural death mm -hmm. because as a consequence of the torture and having had uh, the stroke Strokes, yes. in, in prison, he, 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 democracy is bathed in his blood and we have to remember him for the rest of uh, our lives and remember what Malema also said I agree with him that there are the people who are now organizing but they're the ones who also led to his torture mm -hmm. it is pathetic but that is what history is all about all right, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, appreciate uh, your sentiments yeah. towards uh, Kenneth Matiba and also yeah. appreciate your input uh, on the issue of the resignations. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks very yeah. much. Thank you. Joining me in studio, Okwe Achando, he is an advocate of the High Court, uh, giving his insight into uh, the latest news uh, this morning. It is, of course, a developing story, the resignation of three IEBC commissioners. Well, um, they, of course, resigned with immediate effect and one of them is the IEBC uh, Vice Chairperson Connie Katha and also Commissioners Margaret Wanchanya and Paul Kurgat. They say that they have no faith in the IEBC Chairman Wafula Chebukati. 